Hello everyone and welcome to part 3 of the Sprites Alive tutorial series. Today we're going to look at adding some player control so that the player can move a sprite around on the screen. So we'll start by running Sprites Alive. Okay, we go B for basic. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is change the disk so that we have the disk with our sprites on it. And we can see here that the drawing file is this one, G-A-M-E, S-P-R-T. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll put in an erase command at the start so that way every time we run the program it'll be starting fresh. Load the drawings. Okay, these drawings are designed for mode zero, so we'll go mode zero. And then we'll do a color command, which will load the palette. All right, um, so in order to use the keyboard or joystick controls, then we need to use particular sprites. So for keyboard, you use sprite one. For joystick, you use sprite zero. I'll do it with keyboard in this case, just because uh, not everyone has a joystick. So we'll do sprite one first. So we go get sprite one, and we'll just say drawing zero. So we're using the drawings from my CPC Wars game here. Drawing zero is just the spaceship going up. <clears throat> okay, and to start with. just give it a direction there so it's just going to move one pixel up and one pixel to the right every frame okay I'm going to skip a few numbers just so we can add in some things later on so first we'll put the sprite on the screen one fifty okay then we move the sprite and then we just go back to 110 and move it again Okay, let's see how that goes. All right, now you can see that in this case the sprite doesn't bounce like it normally would. That's because it's a player sprite. So if it hits the edge of the screen, it's just going to stop. Okay, I'm going to change back to mode one to make it a bit easier to type here. Let's list our program. Okay, so instead of just giving it a direction, let's use the keyboard controls. Now we can see that both the joystick and keyboard commands, they take in a number, which is going to tell it which controls to allow. So if you give it just one, you can only have it move up. If you want to say move up and down, you go one plus two is three, so it's a binary coded kind of thing. So let's say we want up, down, left, and right, that will be 15. So instead of doing a direction, we go keyboard for keyboard, and we'll say 15 run our program again and now you can see as I'm pressing the keys the sprites moving around we don't have any diagonal movements but if we wanted to do that well then we would uh, add in another 16 to allow diagonals so we could go 31 run it again Right, and also diagonals. Now you can see that the sprite is moving a bit faster in the horizontal than it does in the vertical. That's because of the way that the mode zero works. It's stretched. So we'll add in another command which will give it a different speed in the vertical axis. So we go keb speed, keyboard speed, and then it's up, down, left, right. So we go two pixels up and down, but only one pixel left and right. can see now that it's moving a bit faster in the vertical there so for example our diagonals are proper diagonals okay so that's nice but it's just a static image of the rocket bouncing around there so the next thing we want to do is add in an animation sequence 
So if we go to page 28 of the manual here, and we can see that it's using these numbers for the direction. So we kind of go one, two, three, four, but then over here it's five, six, seven, eight. And that's the order in which we want to define the drawings for the directions. And we can see, so for example, to go up, we'd have the first sprite of the up sequence and then the last sprite of the up sequence. So that'd be zero to two. To go down, we'd have three to five, six to eight, nine, and so on, all the way down there. Okay, so let's go back to mode one so it's a little bit easier to type. List our program. Okay, so we're going to put in a line 80 with a sequence. And we want that to be sequence one. It's not the same as sprite one. You could use the same sequence for multiple sprites, but in this case we'll just say sequence one is going to be again zero to two for up. And then we want to look at the number two diagonal, which is going to be uh, 18 to 20 because that's going this direction and then we just keep going through for all of the different directions okay so we've got our sequence defined and then we'll need to link it to the sprite so we say Animate, sprite one, sequence one. Okay, let's run our program now. And you can see, depending on which direction we go, it's using a different set of sprites, a uh, set of drawings for the sprite. Now, it's kind of hard to see the animation. That's because we've only got one sprite on the screen, so it's running pretty quickly, although you'll find that once you put in some enemies and things, frame rate's probably going to drop anyway. But to make it a little bit smoother, you can put in a frame command. And this is just going to pause until the start of the next frame, so it'll sync it up with the screen refresh. You can see it's moving a little bit slower now, and we've got a bit of a better impression of the animation happening there. And again, once you put in some enemies, you'll find that your frame rate is not going to stay at this level. So that frame command probably isn't that useful uh, unless you're having some particular issues. I've uh, been using it in another program to sync up color cycling. Okay, that's it for this week. Next time we'll have a look at adding in uh, some missiles so that the player can shoot some little lasers around the, the screen. Okay, thanks for watching.